Hi amigos, are you all set? We are going to start our today's class and uh, what we are going to learn today, uh, I think that uh, some uh, viewers uh, who are seriously watching this channel know already what sort of uh, lessons we generally learn in this class. All sorts of lessons, gener lessons generally in connection with English, but uh, these days uh, we are learning mostly um, error corrections and uh, also single word expressions. So last uh, two videos were on error corrections. And uh, today we are going to uh, start our class to learn single word expressions. Single English word expressions. Single English word expressions. Why, why? what is the necessity of learning the single English word expressions? The main function of it, or main uh, purpose, is to make our English very concise, very succinct, terse. All these three words mean the same, okay? Um, we want to, uh, we, we don't want actually to burden our English. If you make your language very burdensome, it becomes uh, very difficult for the listeners to understand what you say. And that's a typical uh, sort of English and uh, these days, especially in the modern times, in the um, hurry, bustle and hurry of the modern times, uh, we try to use uh, as few words as possible in order to express our thoughts. And for that reason only, it is very important for us to know single English word expressions so that we can use uh, exact precise words when we are speaking English. Otherwise, we have to use a lot of words. Let me cite an example. Uh, it will become clearer to you at the time. Uh, say, uh, previously there was a gentleman whose uh, name was uh, Johnson. And he used to speak, every, he used to express his thought in a very roundabout way. And so that uh, sort of English is uh, known to be um, Johnsonian English. But in these modern times, so we generally avoid Johnsonian English. Now, what sort of English uh, did Johnson speak? Johnson, at a, at a particular social gathering, Johnson wanted to uh, borrow a pinch of snuff from a lady. Now, instead of asking simply, ma'am, may I uh, take a pinch of snuff from, your, from you? He said in a roundabout way, circumlocutory way. What was the way? Ma'am, will you allow the tips of my fingers to enter into the concavity of your box to take a pinch of dust to titillate my olfactory nerves? Isn't it very strange? I feel at least it is very strange. He could have easily said, ma'am, may I uh, take a pinch of snuff? So instead of that, he said in a roundabout way. Uh, if you speak English in this particular way uh, in the modern times, people will simply laugh at you. And uh, when uh, you, you are going to attend an interview, uh, say your interviewer asks you a question and you answer the question in this way, Johnsonian way. Your interviewer is never going to hire you for the company. Why? Because this sort of English is regarded as archaic. Archaic means obsolete, outdated. We do not speak this way. So we use the exact words. Uh, for example, a woman who lives with a man but not married to him. He, uh, he doesn't have the status of a wife. I'm sorry, she doesn't have the status of uh, his wife. She lives with the man, but not married to that man. So what is that woman called? There is a single word for that. I think if you know the single word, please write down in the comment box. And if you do not remember right at this moment, you will get some time to uh, cultivate your memory, to uh, try to remember the word. And if you remember during the course of this video, please write down in the comment box. I'm not going to give the word right at this moment. I shall give you before the video ends, before this session ends, but uh, I give you some time to think.
Now, so we are now going to pay full attention to the whiteboard and uh, see what is there on this whiteboard for us today. There are seven meanings here, as you can clearly see. And before uh, I start the lesson, I would like to tell you, as uh, usually, that please uh, watch this video full screen so that you can understand what is written on the whiteboard. If you do not watch this video full screen, it will not be possible for you to make out uh, what is written on the board. And without seeing what is written on the board, uh, if you just watch this video, if you listen to what I'm saying, I think that uh, it will be a little problematic for you. So number one C, enjoying activities that are harmful such as drinking. Seeing the meaning, you can clearly understand that this meaning requires an adjective. An adjective. Okay, so what is that single adjective which means this? If you know the single uh, precise adjective, then you can avoid using so many words. And your English will be very, very succinct. Your English will be very, very concise, epigrammatic. I, th I think you can understand what the meaning says. Enjoying activities that are harmful, harmful activities. There are some people who enjoy harmful activities, such as drinking, uh, then uh, indulging in promiscuous sex, uh, taking drugs, okay, uh, smoking marijuana. So this kind of uh, harmful activities he enjoys. So what, what sort of, what is that particular adjective that qualifies that person, that uh, man or a woman? So the single word is dissipated. Let me write down the word for you. If you uh, can, please write down the word in your uh, exercise book so that you don't have to watch this video repeatedly. And if you don't have a notebook, try to remember this word. If you forget, once again, watch this video. The word is dissipated. D I double S I P A T E D dissipated. The word is dissipated. So he is a dissipated guy. He is a dissipated guy. Sometimes it is used uh, not with a person, but uh, um, the person's behavior or the person's uh, lifestyle. He lives a dissipated lifestyle. It is not uh, advisable uh, to live a dissipated, dissipated lifestyle because say, it will do harm uh, to you ultimately. Dissipated. So this is an adjective which means enjoying activities that are harmful such as drinking. Are you thinking of that which I have asked you? A woman who lives with a man but not married to that man. So she doesn't enjoy the status of a wife. Think. Okay. While you are watching this video, keep thinking as well. And write down. As soon as you remember the word, you write down there. Number two, number two is a person who says that something very bad is going to happen. Okay, let me tell you something about the uh, about uh, this particular word, dissipated. Uh, does this does this particular meaning remind you of a particular uh, sort of people? It reminds me of the Sions of the Landocrats. I think you understand the meaning of the word Landocrat. Landocrat the uh, Indian counterpart of uh, the word Landocrat is Zamindar, the sons of Zamindar or Zamindars themselves used to live a very dissipated lifestyle. They used to drink throughout the night, they used to um, hire notch girls who used to dance uh, and uh, they enjoyed uh, promiscuous sex, some sensual pleasures they always uh, ran after. So the, the Sion of uh, uh, Landocrat lives a dissipated lifestyle. Number two, yeah. A person who says that something very bad is going to happen. 
on YouTube these days, you will see there are a lot of uh, self-proclaimed astrologers uh, who always uh, predict uh, something uh, ominous, uh, something sinister. Uh, say, for example, I, I just uh, often come across uh, videos uh, in which the astrologers uh, talk about some wars, uh, some, uh, um, say, some epidemic, pandemic, or famine, drought, and this sort of uh, thing. So these are all very uh, sinister things. So, so these people are very fond of uh, predicting or talking about uh, something evil that is going to happen, something very, very harmful, so something very, very disastrous, which is going to happen. So they are, what is that person called? A person who always uh, says that something very bad is going to happen. Of course, this person is pessimistic because the optimistic people will never talk like that. But uh, pessimistic people generally talk this way. But if the single word is not a pessimist, pessimist uh, doesn't mean that only. Okay, here it is written that person always talks about what is going to happen. And that is obviously something very, very evil, something very, very sinister, ominous. So what is that person called? The person is called Doomstar. Let me write down the word for you. I'm going to spell out the word very loudly so that you can note down in your exercise book. The word is Doomstar. D double O M S T E R. Doomster. He is a doomster. These days, uh, YouTube is uh, full of uh, videos uh, uh, by doomsters, by astrologers who uh, predict or prophesy that something evil, something dangerous, something uh, disastrous is going to happen. Okay? So they are all doomsters. Let's move on to number three. Number three is the custom of marrying people only from one's own community. This is a common practice in our society. A uh, Hindu generally wants to marry a Hindu, a Muslim wants to marry a Muslim, um, a Christian wants to marry a Christian. So they want to marry within their own community only. They don't want to marry somebody from some other community. Now what is that custom called? There is a single word for that. And that word is used uh, very widely in biology. If you are a student of uh, science, you must uh, know the word. But I'm not talking about the technical meaning of that word. I'm talking about the uh, common English meaning of that word. That word means the custom of marrying people only from one's own community. These people, the people who uh, practice this custom do not marry someone from outside their own community and the word is let me write down e n d o g a M Y. The word is endogamy. Endogamy. Endogamy is in practice in our society. Endogamy is in practice in our society. Now, what is the opposite of this one? Those of you who have studied science already uh, know what, what the opposite of endogamy is. The opposite of endogamy is exogamy. Exogamy, E X O, exogamy, G A M Y. So endogamy uh, is uh, very much in practice in uh, some, uh, say, some uh, countries like uh, Pakistan. They generally have endogamy, and uh, why only Pakistan? In India, we as well follow uh, endogamy. We are also practicing endogamy. Very. Uh, few people marry outside their community. But I'm not uh, saying whether it is bad or good, nothing of that sort. I'm simply talking about this English word. Do not misunderstand me. I'm not going to judge anybody. Uh, if, you, if, you, if someone wants to marry someone from some other community, uh, he or she is all right, all right, welcome. 
There is no problem. I, I don't have any objection at least. So the word is endogamy. Let's move on to number four. Number four is artificial and not as good as the real thing or product. That means uh, uh, an inferior substitute. There's a substitute obviously for the original, but that's an inferior substitute. That is not as good as the original one, the real one. So what is that called? That is also an adjective. Okay, artificial as you understand artificial this word is an adjective therefore the meaning that is going to be written here is also an adjective and the word is let me write down you also write down in your exercise book e r is a t z Ersatz, ersatz, the word is ersatz, pronounced correctly, ersatz, okay, artificial and not as good as the real thing or product, ersatz, so let us make an example sentence, say someone is uh, showing some emotion to you and now you understand seeing that uh, person that uh, this emotion is fake emotion not original emotion so you may say uh, man your ersatz emotion ersatz emotion is clearly understandable ersatz so in that sense or, or sometimes it is used in the sense of uh, say ersatz coffee not original coffee, not uh, it is just an inferior substitute for coffee. Airshots. In Google, you will find these examples. I have collected these uh, example sentences from Google. Number five language that sounds impressive but does not mean much. When you hear the language, you feel that the language is very impressive. But when you try to make out what this language you know, is eventually or actually says, you do not understand anything because there is nothing. There is no substance. But simply a few bombastic words are used or uh, say some uh, difficult job-breaking words are used by somebody. But in fact, when you try to decipher the meaning, you see that the meaning is almost nothing. So what is that language called? There is a single word. If you do not know the single word, you have to use so many words. See, uh, he always speaks language that uh, sounds impressive but does not mean much. So many words you have to speak. And if you know the exact word, then you may avoid using so many words. And your English expression will be very, very epigrammatic. People will like, people will uh, appreciate your English. And the word is Faustian. Faustian. Let me write down. If U is T I A N, the word is Faustian. Faustian is the British pronunciation, Faustian. And American pronunciation of this word is Faustian, Faustian. So if you want to speak American uh, English or if you want to use the American uh, pronunciation, you should pronounce Faustian. And if you are fond of the British pronunciation, you should say Faustian. Okay, so the, the example sentence is, man, stop your Faustian. Your Faustian really disgusts me. Faustian. So in this way you may use this particular word. This is a noun. As you understand that it means a language. So language is a noun. Therefore it is also a noun. Faustian. Number six. A pub which is well known for serving good food. A pub with a restaurant, the only difference between a pub and a restaurant is uh, uh, a restaurant uh, serves food, meals, whereas a pub serves uh, both uh, food and uh, drinks, alcohol. But uh, 
in the modern times sometimes pub is used also in the sense of a restaurant only but uh, what is the single word for this a pub which is well known or say uh, let us use the word restaurant a restaurant which is well known for serving good food okay so what is that restaurant say you have gone to a certain locality or you have gone uh, to a place where you have not visited uh, earlier and there you are you are now hungry you want to eat something so you ask some local guy um, excuse me brother would you kindly tell me whether there is any restaurant or the, whether there is any pub that uh, serves or that has the reputation for serving good food so many words they have used to but if you know the single word you can use that particular single word only and uh, it will be very easy for that man to understand what you say and the single word is g a s t r o p u b the word is gastropub. The word is gastropub. Uh, hello, brother. Can you kindly tell me whether there is any gastropub nearby? Whether there is any gastropub nearby? Generally, the food served there is expensive. The food served at a gastropub is expensive. Okay? So, uh, you are looking for a gastropub somewhere. Or you may say, um, there is a gastropub, new gastropub in our locality. Let's move on to the uh, next one and next one is number seven and that is going to be the last one for today's uh, session and the uh, word is, uh, the meaning is a situation in which a crowd of people are rushing and pushing each other in a confused way. So many words of this. But now we are going to use only one word to mean these so many words. So you can avoid using so many words by using only a single word. Try to understand the meaning first. A situation in which a crowd of people are rushing and pushing each other in a confused way. So it is absolutely disorderly. A disorderly crowd People are moving about, people are rushing and uh, pushing each other, say, in front of the booking counter. In the past, it used to be found. This this it is not found because everything is generally online. But earlier, it was found that in front of the booking counter of a movie theater, there used to be a crowd, huge crowd for booking tickets. And uh, there was so much confusion there in the crowd. Um, each one was pushing the other in order to get the ticket first. So at that time, say all of a sudden, the um, uh, policemen come up there and they uh, start um, latte charging. Latte charging, you know? Latte charging is an Indian word, but it is used in English as well. They are uh, uh, hitting everybody uh, nearby with their own stick. And so what they do, people start running about. So what is that single word? The single word is melee. Let me write down. M E L Double E M E L Double E and the pronunciation is melee. Melee. The pronunciation is melee. Try to remember the pronunciation. Melee. Melee means a situation in which a crowd of people are rushing and pushing each other in a confused way. So uh, there is. A, I, I wouldn't go there. Why? There is a melee there. Don't you see? I will not be able to stand there properly. People will be pushing me uh, roughly. So there is a melee. So these seven words, single words, you have learned today. And they are meanings also here. 
and start using these seven words. If you simply keep learning words, keep memorizing words, the words will not remain in your memory for long until and unless you start using them. Whenever you get the uh, scope, whenever you get the opportunity, try to use these words. If you use these words a number of times, these words uh, will be uh, absolutely re registered in your memory forever and you will not forget them. So I want my friends to use this kind of words and avoid so many words. I generally prefer using uh, very precise words so that my expression, my uh, thought can be expressed very appropriately. My listeners uh, do not feel confused. So I want my friends as well, you, to use the words, uh, precise words, in order to make your English very concise. Very, another word I have used for concise, that is succinct. Okay? And yes, now that particular word, that particular single word, which I asked you to remember. A woman who lives with a man, but is not married to that man. The man may have his wife back at home. But somewhere else, uh, he has another woman to live with him. A uh, man who lives a dissipated lifestyle must have a woman uh, in this way. Okay? A woman uh, is uh, living with a man. These days, uh, we do not find in our society because there are names given to uh, all the relationships in spite of the fact that uh, they are not married. But in the past, the rich people used to have a woman uh, in their farmhouse who was not their wives exactly. That woman was not their wife. So that woman is called a concubine. C-O-N-C-U-B-I-N-E. He has a concubine. He has a concubine. Oh, you are talking about uh, John? I really doubt, I suspect John's character. Why? I have heard from someone that he has a concubine. He has a concubine. Concubine means a woman who lives with a man but is not married to that man. All right? But uh, my dear uh, woman viewers, do not misunderstand me. I'm in no way trying to disparage women. There are both men and women who are uh, willing to live a very dissipated lifestyle. And I'm talking about those uh, men and those women only. But uh, you, my, from my dear ladies, respectable, honorable ladies, do not misunderstand me. I generally regard every woman as my mother because I worship Mother Goddess Jagardharti. Okay? So I respect each and every woman. Even if uh, someone is a concubine of someone else, I respect that woman. Alright? So now I don't want to just prolong this video by talking uh, airy fairy any longer. Better, it is better for us to wrap up this session now. I think uh, those of you who have not yet subscribed to this channel must be willing to subscribe to this channel because if you want the prosperity of this channel, you must subscribe to this channel. Without your help, without your support, how is it possible for us to run this channel? So uh, those of you who enjoy this video, if you think that you have learned something from these video sessions, give us a like please. And if you don't enjoy the videos, if you don't think that this video has anything to teach you, you may dislike. You may give us a dislike, thumbs down. But I shall request you, why you are giving a thumbs down must be stated clearly in the comment box. So that I can improve my teaching style. If you don't like or if you feel that somewhere there is some uh, something wrong with this uh, teaching method, then please mention that in the comment box. And I assure you, my dear friends, I shall try to remove that particular uh, fault from my teaching style. 
Okay? Thank you very much. See you again in the next session. So long.